Tonight is set to be clear and it's also going to be a kind of a special session for me. Uh, it's actually going to be hopefully the last time that I set up all my telescope equipment on these flagstones right here. Um, I am hoping to get started in building an observatory custom built by myself um, in the next couple of days literally. So uh, there'll be a few weeks probably without any astronomy getting done and just a whole lot of building but Nonetheless, I thought I'd make the most of tonight and this perhaps last ever session uh, on this pad. I am going to miss it, if I'm uh, being honest. I'm not moving it far, to be honest. Uh, the actual observatory I'm planning, the observatory room, is going to be just kind of over there. I don't know if you can see uh, off the camera where the motorbikes were stored. Um, so not far, but still it's going to be a departure from what I've been used to for many years now, getting set up on this little pad, and it's been a bit of a ritual uh, that will become no more, but hopefully for the better. Um, I won't have to do any more of the kind of silly <laughs> carrying out and things of all this equipment that really should be living in an observatory. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to share this one with you guys. Uh, I'm thinking tonight of shooting uh, M51, it's a target that's always been uh, kind of close to my heart, it's uh, one of the first ones I shot, the actual first was M42, but then what does everybody shoot next? I would wager many people, uh, it's M51, the next brightest kind of thing in the northern hemisphere, um, and yeah, I'm just aiming to have some fun tonight and uh, enjoy myself, so I'm going to go ahead and get everything carried out right now. All right, so tonight I'm going to be setting up and uh, getting myself polar aligned using Nina's new kind of experimental plugin, the three point polar align. Um, one of the things I like about this is that it actually moves the mount for you rather than kind of sharp gaps polar alignment, which is great still, uh, but you do have to undo uh, your clutches, your RA clutch, and rotate it. So that is an advantage for this system, it makes it quite a lot more automated and uh, Anything that means I don't have to mess around with these tiny little clutch levers on the EQ8 is a good thing for me. So basically you can, I uh, hope I'm not blocking the camera too much here, but you can install it uh, by going to the plugins window. And as you can see, it's there, it's three point polar align. Um, you can search for them available. And just click what you want and get them set off. Uh, downloading and installed, you'll have to restart Nina. The next time you fire it up, it'll be within the imaging uh, window. So down here you see I've got a three point polar line and uh, just with all defaults, I'm gonna hit start. Now, the first thing it's gonna do is kind of slew the scope uh, a little bit in RA um, and it'll take a measurement. It'll then make a second movement where it moves the scope by a, a smaller amount take another measurement and then it'll make finally a third uh, small slew and uh, basically from that point onwards it's down to you to use your uh, latitude and longitude uh, bolts on the back of the mount there for me and get everything kind of perfect so it's got little hints telling you which uh, direction you need to move it so currently we can see it's about to take that first image it's capturing a new image to solve all right it's got that I am using quite a small sensor, as I mentioned I'm using the uh, the Player One Apollo M Mini tonight, so if it can do it with this, I'm sure it can do it with just about any sensor and telescope combination, because uh, this 300 PDS is a 1500mm focal length, as I said, paired uh, with a small sensor, it's pretty extreme. Um, so we're just about ready, I think in a moment, it's retrieving that final measurement point. And there we go. So you can see the azimuth error. Uh, it's 58 arc minutes and 27 arc seconds. I need to move the scope left. So to do that, 
I'm going to move these back two legs to the right, like turning a wheelbarrow. I always like to uh, describe it as. So I'm going to pivot on the north leg. So I'll make a decent little movement there. Let's see, 16. I'll let it kind of solve itself two times. Sorry if this <laughs> back of this big scope is blocking uh, your view there. All right, so it is 16. I'll, it's still a big enough movement that I'll make it by moving the tripod. I'll let that settle. And how many uh, minutes are we at? Let's see. Seems to be having trouble solving this one now. Could be that I rocked the scope uh, a little bit. Plate solve failed. Um, let's see. So if you get this issue kind of occurring, um, which can happen, again, due to this tiny restrictive field of view. It has solved it now. Um, you may need to move it kind of back and <laughs> steadily move it uh, to its new position. I probably overshot, but... Oh, did I? Yeah, it needs to go east now, so uh, if I can remember which way around. That's wrong, that's west. <laughs> I'll be glad when I don't have to do this every uh, every single night, that's for sure. So I'll just uh, kind of proceed along with this now. As you can see, basically, this is all I'm doing, though. Uh, I'm making these small adjustments. It's telling me the total amount of error, and we've just had a <laughs> disconnect. Everything's going wrong tonight, but that's uh, that's astronomy, what's and all. Um, nevertheless, I'll stick with this for a few moments and get myself set up, but I'm sure with just that basic demonstration there, you can see uh, kind of what you must do, and it's really not that hard. Once I've done this, it does still know its position. Uh, does the scope, you don't have to return it to home. You can just select your target, which in my case is going to be M51, uh, and it will successfully go to and play solve. It's really quite good. All right, so I've finished with polar alignment now and I've just slewed to M51 to start getting things kind of framed up and centered and I've noticed that my rotation is off. I'm actually rotated to zero or 180 degrees, if you like, depending on which side of the uh, meridian you're at. And uh, the handy thing about Nina is it will tell you what rotation you're at by using, uh, if I just flip the camera around. Um, one second, sorry, yeah. This little button down here, determine rotation from camera. So it basically plate solves a frame and lets you know using this slider here what rotation you're at. You can see using the on screen preview of M51, the ro rotation is indeed uh, wrong. So if I just now uh, quickly go, I'll let this keep running basically live and I'll, I'll flip the camera uh, a little bit. So uh, let's go do that now. So to do this, I'm just loosening the coma corrector, uh, turning it by about 90. That looks good to me. So yeah, I just loosened the coma corrector in the focus of barrel. Uh, hopefully this has just picked things back up. Okay, so um, sorry about the really weird raw nature of this. Uh, <laughs> it is what it is, but let's both now take a look. So if I just hit this determine rotation from camera button, I should have at least close to 90 degrees or 270 if you like. So it's 91.38 and as you can see the framing is now miles better. So I'm happy with that. Uh, I just thought again it was quite a cool little addition and something perhaps worth talking about with this software. I do like using it and I am certainly uh, looking forward to using it more in a kind of observatory setting where <laughs> I can leave a lot of things just set up session after session. Uh, that should be quite nice. Anyway, I'm going to set a sequence off in a moment, just a very simple one. It's going to be, I think, 50-50 luminance to RGB, so probably I'll interleave the frames. So probably go LLL RGB, LLL RGB throughout the night. Uh, and I think tonight... 
I'm just going to be shooting with kind of one minute exposures. This uh, this player one mono, I, I know it's meant to be a solar camera, but it's it's fantastic for deep sky it seems, and it's really sensitive, so it won't need much longer than those one minute exposures. Uh, it does have quite big pixels as well, so that should be hoovering up all the available light. Anyway, I'm looking forward to getting started, so that's what I'm going to do right now, and we'll catch up in a little while. Well guys, we're a few hours on from when last we spoke and unfortunately the conditions are really quite bad tonight and it looks set basically to stay that way. Um, it is what it is. I don't really mind that much. As long as I get maybe something to share with you guys at the end to make it worth your while watching this video. Um, and if nothing else, I managed to mark the last session on this particular little section uh, of the flagstones there. Um, that's something, at least I have been setting up my telescope on this exact spot for uh, seven years now, I think. So, certainly, I, I think it will worth a little video to mark the last session here. So, um, it sounds like I'm moving to another country, doesn't it? It's actually basically just going here to about 12 feet that way. So, <laughs> it's nothing too extreme. Uh, I don't want to get anybody's wires crossed and think I'm uh, going anywhere. But, yeah, anyway... Um, I think rather than kind of drag this on, probably a bit late for that now, but uh, I'll end it here and just say thank you very much indeed for sharing this last little session on this particular part of the, the flags with me. Uh, I've enjoyed sharing it with you and um, I hope that you've enjoyed getting something out of this video or at least found it mildly entertaining. So hopefully the next time you see me, uh, I'm going to be getting my hands dirty. Starting making this observatory, which I'm really, really looking forward to. Uh, and I'd just like to say, kind of on that note, thank you all very much indeed for watching the videos and giving all the support that you do in the many ways that you do. Um, it's thanks to you guys that I'm actually really able to even think about creating this observatory that I'm going to be doing. And uh, for that reason, if nothing else, then there are many other reasons <laughs> aside from that. But... I'll always be very thankful to you. So uh, genuinely, I hope you've enjoyed. And uh, I think with that said, that's about it. So until next time, guys, I look forward to seeing you in the next videos. And uh, clear skies. <laughs>